let's talk about inverse trig functions, uh, section 6.3 for Math 142. And on this uh, section, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how do you undo these trig functions. So like trig, these functions that we've been dealing with, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, remember what they do is they take in an angle and they spit out a ratio. So when we say something like uh, sine of pi over 6, sine of pi over 6, let's see, what is that? It's one we might know, or maybe we are like, pi over 6, that's familiar. Pi over 6 is right here. Sine is height. It's 1 half. So if I do that rotation, I have a height of 1 half. So sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, right? We can think about that on the unit circle. We can also think about that in a triangle. If I have an angle of pi over 6, uh, one half opposite over hypotenuse, it would, you know, th these would be the pieces of the triangle. It's giving me that ratio. What inverse trig functions do, and the, the way that we write them um, is like this, inverse sine of something. Um, it's that function notation. If we have a function, the thing that undoes the function, it's inverse, we write it as f inverse of x. That's not, it's not to the negative one power. It's not like a number to the negative one power. It's just our notation for inverse functions. So what inverse functions do is they undo them. So uh, if I've got some inverse trig function, what it will do is it will input the ratio and it will output the angle. So that means inverse sine of one half this is asking if my ratio is one half, if my y value is one half, what's my angle that goes with it? And it's, it's pi over six. Hey, take note though, it happens here too, right? It happens at five pi over six too, but this is a function, it only returns one answer. So inverse sine, if you think about all the values that sine can spit out, right? Like sine can spit out from negative one to one. If we take that range from negative one to one right here, this is this is the realm, this, this quadrant one and this quadrant four, this is where inverse sine um, outputs values from. And these values down here are negative. So for example, if I ask what is inverse sine of negative one half, right, the y value is negative one half, the answer is not 11 pi over six. It's this negative rotation negative pi over six. It's not 11 pi over six. Inverse sine spits out values. So um, domain is negative to one to one. Its range is negative pi over two to pi over two, or if in degrees, negative 90 to 90. So inverse sine only spits out those values. Even though there's other angles, right, that, that have that same output for y and there's a bunch of them because remember those co-terminal angles you can go around a bunch of times still end up there but arc sine inverse sine it's also called arc sine um, returns just the values in these two um, quadrants and it's continuous from negative pi over two to pi over two so let's actually think about this domain range thing for for everything so we've got domain We've got range, and we know for arc sine, for inverse sine, the domain, the inputs are negative one to one. It doesn't make it doesn't make sense to go arc sine of three because well, there's no three value. Like it never spits out three. It never gets bigger than one. So this is no solution. Another way to think about this is if I was asking this, my ratio would be three over one, right? And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this would be one long and this would be three long. And that's impossible. This is the longest side. So, and again, it's range when it spits out uh, negative pi over two to pi over two. Inverse cosine, the thing that undoes cosine, remember cosine's width, right? Those x values. Same domain, we can plug in negative one to one, plug in anything bigger than those values in magnitude, and we get an error. Uh, same idea, run that, um, run that range from negative one to one for those x values. And this will spit out anything in this range, in the first 
for the uh, second quadrant. Because notice our x values go from 1, boop, 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 all the way to negative 1. It gives us all these answers. It doesn't give us anything bigger than pi. So its range goes from 0 to pi. Whoops. And then lastly, inverse tangent. Uh, inverse tangent. Tangent is the slope function. It's how steep it is. So tangent actually can take in anything. Right? If you think about uh, y over x, y can be really big and x can be really small. x can be really big, y can be really small. It can take in any, any value. And uh, just like sine, tangent lives in the first and fourth quadrant. Uh, inverse tangent does, sorry, arc tangent. But it also gives you values in here. And it, it'll run all of our possibilities. Um, for angles then all right so there are some things about these so let's let's evaluate uh let's evaluate some of these and see what we can what we can get out of this and let's take a look at um unit circle for it so arc sine of negative root two over two so arc sine i know it's going to be somewhere in here uh sine is y value so my ratio is a y right and so where does that happen? That happens here. And notice that this rotation, it's not, it's not 7 pi over 4. It's not rotating this way. It's rotating that way. Um, so it is negative pi over 4. All right, inverse cosine of negative root 3 over 2. Inverse cosine, those are x values. Runs from 1 to negative 1 here. Um, we want negative root 3 over 2. So that's here. 5 pi over 6. Okay, sine of root 3 over 2. That's a y value. It's here. So pi over 3. Arctan inverse tangent of 1. So tangent is y over x. So we want to find the spot where they're the same. Inverse tangent is quadrants 1 and 4. Here's where they're the same. It's pi over 4. In other words, what angle will spit out a slope of 1? what we're looking for with that. Arc sine of negative 1. It's here, but remember it's not that rotation, it's this rotation, so that would be negative pi over 2. Inverse cosine of negative 1, cosine is about the x value, so it's here, it's out here at pi. There we go. Uh, inverse tangent of negative 1. When are they the same magnitude but opposite signs. Remember, inverse tangents here and here. So it would be here. It's not 7 pi over 4. It's negative pi over 4. It's that negative rotation. You can see that symmetry, you know, that this is pi over 4. So that's negative pi over 4. Now, those were, you know, asked with familiar angles, with those benchmark angles. I could also ask that question something like, what is inverse sine of 0.95? Right? That's that's between one and negative one. Or what's inverse cosine of negative 0.4? What's inverse sine of 3.5? Like I could ask those questions. Uh, one of these hopefully makes you uncomfortable without even thinking about it. But if this these aren't things that are on my unit circle, let's use some technology. I can use my my calculator, use my my big lookup table. And inverse sine, what I love is when they put the inverse function on the board above the function. So sine's here, inverse sine's here, right? Cosine inverse tangent, uh, cosine, sorry. Tangent inverse tangent, squaring square rooting. So if I want inverse sine, I'm gonna go inverse sine of 0.95. Now the question is, am I in degrees or am I in radians? So I'm gonna go into mode and notice I'm in degrees. So if I do that right now, that'll give me degrees. I want my answers in radians. Hit enter to select radian. Okay, so inverse sine of 0.95, is about well hopefully now now i have to remember what it was 1.2 something 1.253 right uh inverse cosine of point of negative 0. 0.4 1.982 about uh inverse sine of 3.5 hopefully you're like there's no answer to that because that's bigger than one uh let's see what the calculator does with that inverse sine of 3.5 Domain error. 
right? We tried to put in something that is outside of the domain. So we'll just say, no solution, not doable, can't do it. So this gives us a tool for doing a little bit of measurement and figuring out angle if we're given two sides. So if I look at this first uh, right triangle here, I've got an angle theta and I've got the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So I know that cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse. Right? If I input the angle into cosine, it will give me that ratio. But if I want to know the angle, I can go inverse cosine or arc cosine of the ratio, and it will give me the angle. And again, just shove that in my calculator, and it will tell me what it is. If I set this one up, uh, opposite and hypotenuse, that is sine. Whoops. So sine of the angle is 3 fifths. So if I want to know the angle, I can take the arc sine or the inverse sine of the ratio. Do that in my calculator, and it will give me a good approximation for that. All right, um, there's one more thing I want to think about these, and it's a really good connection. Um, these are these are great problems. I want to know what the sine of the inverse cosine of four fifths is. So notice what we're doing. We're we're plugging four fifths into inverse sine and that should or cosine and that should give us an angle and then we're going to put that angle into sine and that will give us a ratio so we can actually get this without figuring out what that angle is and what i'm going to do i'm going to draw a triangle uh, so inverse cosine of four fifths so inverse cosine is here first and second quadrant if it's four fifths it'll be here in the first quadrant um, because it's positive, right? So let's see, cosine adjacent, so it's four over five, or you could say this is a one and this is four fifths. You could do it either way. Um, I'm gonna use Pythagorean theorem then to figure out this missing length. So I'll say uh, five squared minus four squared, square root of that is three. So if this is my angle, this right here is that inverse cosine of four fifths, I mean, sine of that would be three-fifths, right? This is the angle. Sine of that angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Let's do another one. Well, actually, yeah, let's do it. Let's just do it. Uh, sine, it's going to be very similar. Inverse cosine, but let's make it the negative. So sine of inverse cosine of negative three-fifths. Okay, so inverse cosine of negative three-fifths. That's going to be over here. And there's my angle. Now, here's the thing I want you to think about. Oh, shoot. Sorry. I'm going to redraw this. Sine? Yeah, I'm fine with sine. That can take in anything. So if this is three, this is five, I can use Pythagorean theorem to get this. Uh, square root of 5 squared minus negative 3 squared is 4. It's going up 4. So inverse cosine of negative 3 fifths is this angle. Sine of that angle is the height over the hypotenuse. 4 fifths. Do another one. Sine of inverse tangent of 7 fourths. Okay, those are both positive. Inverse tangent operates here and here. So let's do that. Um, 7 fourths, rise over run, y over x. Tangent of, of 7 fourths is that angle right there. I want sine of that angle, which is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So I need the hypotenuse. So I will use Pythagorean theorem for this. That's 49 plus 16. 60. So we got square root of 65. So that's how long this is. So sine of that angle then would be height over that. And I technically shouldn't leave that in the denominator. So it's 65 over 65. All right. Here's a good one. Sine 
of cosine of inverse cosine of x minus one. Whoa, x minus one is my it's my ratio. So let me think about this. Uh, x this is like x minus one over one. So if this side is x minus one, this side is one long. So inverse cosine of that will be the measure of this angle. And what I if I want a sine of it, I need this side over the hypotenuse. So let me do Pythagorean theorem here. This is going to be the square root of 1 squared minus x minus 1 squared. Okay, I'm going to have to do a little bit of algebra here. 1 squared minus uh, x minus 1 squared is x squared minus 2x plus 1. And I distribute that negative into there. So it's 1 minus x squared plus 2x minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so it's the square root of negative x squared plus 2x. Wow. So sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, and over 1 would just be itself, so this would end up being negative x squared plus 2x. All right, hey, give these problems a try. Um, post any questions that you have, either in the forums or message me with them.